Dear students, today we will discuss about queues. Queue is a data structure which can be easily implemented using arrays. It has a very proper uh, sequential storage data structure with which we can store a data in the first in first out manner. Q is a generalized methodology which we are regularly using in our daily life. Q is a data structure in which elements are removed in the same order as they were entered. This is often referred as first in first out methodology. So Q has two ends. One is a front and the other is rear. From rear we will keep inserting a data from front we will be removing the items. Q has two kind of operations. One is insertion and the other is one is inserting a data and other is removing a data. So it works like a, a person is moving to a ticket counter and it has been followed by many people. So the first person who reached to the ticket counter will be pointed by the front. Once he get a ticket, he will be removed from that queue and the next person will move in so that the next person who is near to the ticket counter will be referred by the pointer rear and the person who is at the rear, the last person in the queue will always be pointed by front sorry it will be pointed by rear and the person a new person gets into the queue will also be pointed by rear always so queue has two operations one is insertion and other is deletion so this particular diagram shows that there are two pointers one is rear and the other is front the elements can be removed with a DQ operation from the front whereas the new elements can be entered into the queue with NQ operation. We have different types of queues available for the requirement of the applications, different applications. One is a circular queue. In a circular queue, we have no end of the array. We can keep inserting the elements with the help of a rear pointer. So rear pointer will always point the recent element that has been added to the queue. Whereas front will keep pointing the element which will can be removed from the queue. So this is how we can maintain a circular queue. In a circular queue when all the available spaces or usable area will be utilized then the overlapping will be done the new data which enters into the full queue then the new data will overlap the oldest data in the queue but this can also be managed with our programming language as per the requirement of the application. We also have uh, two different types of priority queues. One is minimum and the second is a maximum queue. These priorities can be changed depending on the requirement. We keep inserting the data into the queue with the regular method but when we dequeue or remove the element from the queue it will be applied with the priority. Depending on the priority, a particular element from the queue can be removed. There are many applications in computer science which can be implemented using queue. Data getting transferred between the I.O. buffers need a queue so that a data transfer can be easily done. CPU scheduling. The number of jobs which are applied to the CPU can be scheduled 
one after another. For that, we need a queue with which the applications or the processes can be very easily provided to the CPU. Managing shared resources between various processes. The limited resources can be shared as per the priority based queue to the processes. Job scheduling algorithms. The algorithms with which we will schedule the job can also be managed with the queue. Round robin scheduling technique in operating system will always be implemented using queue. Some of the priority queue based applications are here. Prim's algorithm, Dijkstra's algorithm, A star search algorithm. Priority queues are also used to sort the heaps as well as in the microprocessor, interrupt handling method will also be done with the help of queue. Huffman codes for data compression, we need a priority queues. Queue behavior. Queue has two pointers. One is a front and the other one is a rear. Both are at minus one or empty position in the initial stage. Here, rear is defined with the red pointer, whereas front is defined with the green pointer. If a new item is inserted, then both the pointers will be incremented and keep pointing to the new element inserted in the queue. Here one is the data item inserted in the queue and both the pointers now started pointing to the first element in the queue. When a new data item inserted in the queue, here it is 2, then the pointer, rear pointer has been incremented but not the front pointer. Rear pointer will keep incrementing as the new data items is being in entered into the queue. So here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, these elements have been entered into the queue. The last element entered into the queue is 5 and the rear is pointing to the same. When a data item has to be deleted or dequeued from the queue, then the front pointer will increment. Here, one element has been removed from the queue. That is why the front pointer points to the next element in the queue, that is 2. When we keep removing or dequeue the elements from the queue, the front pointer will increment. Here, 2, 3, 4 has been removed. And finally, the front pointer and rear pointer points to the last element. When the last element has been removed, so both of the pointers will be pointing to the empty queue. <coughs> this is queue execution using C programming. Maximum queue size is defined with the 50, it's defined with the max variable. We have three different operations can be implemented on queue. Insertion defined with insert function, deletion defined with delete and display function. We have <coughs> defined an array, Q array with the maximum size 50. We need two pointers, one is rear and the other one is front, both are defined with the minus one that are pointing to the empty Q. In the main function, we have choice as a variable which we will be getting in for the choice of the end user. We get the choice and according to that, we have defined the cases. Case 1 to insert, case 2 to delete, case 3 to display, whereas case 4 is defined to exit the menu. When we get a choice from the user with the switch operation, we will switch according to the requirement of the end user. If he or she wants to insert the element into the queue, then the 
insert the switch one case will call a insert function the insert function here will get a item new item that to be added into the queue the condition is verified if where is equal to equal to max minus one it means it will verify whether this queue is full or not if the queue is full it will display queue overflow means no space is available in the queue and will exit otherwise it will check if friend is equal to equal to minus one means whether the queue is empty or not if the queue is empty then front will be initialized to zero means it will be incremented and the newly collected data item with the scanner is added to the queue with the help of q underscore array the square bracket rare square bracket close equal to add item now the item is added in the queue the rear has to be pointed to the newly added item because this is the first item to be added in the queue that is why rear is equal to rear plus one is also been incremented this process will continue until unless we will we keep inserting the elements into the queue when a user press 2 as a choice then a delete procedure for the queue can be implemented delete function is written and in that first condition front is equal to equal to minus 1 or front is greater than rear this condition is used to understand that the queue ha Q is empty. Front, my, front is equal to minus 1 is already defined in the initial stage for defining that the Q is empty. If front is greater than rear then also Q can be defined as a empty. If it happens then the message Q underflow it means Q is empty there is nothing in the Q is defined and it will come out of the program if q is not empty then it will switch to else in the delete function and the element from the q will be taken out that is q underscore array front it will be displayed that this particular element has been deleted from the q and front has incremented by one to point to the next element in the q because first element has been deleted then the third function is a display which keeps displaying the actual contents in the queue with the help of for loop so this for loop will display all the contents in the queue this is how we can implement the program i want you to execute the program as defined here and verify whether the queue behaves as per the requirement or not. Thank you.